All right, new chapter. So what we're going to do today is to take what we have learned in the previous videos and combine them to get the ISLM equilibrium. We are also going to talk about fiscal policy. So let's begin by talking about how is the ISLM equilibrium being established. So in order to have this equilibrium in the ISLM model, you're going to need to have a simultaneous equilibrium happening in two different markets. So the first market is going to be a goods market and the second market is going to be your money market. Okay, so let's do a quick recap on how we graphically represent each of these markets. To represent the goods market, we make use of the Keynesian cross diagram, which is a graph with aggregate expenditure on the vertical axis and GDP on the horizontal axis. So uh, in the section of a 45 degree line and the AE curve will give you your equilibrium output. As for the money market, we use a money market diagram, which is a graph with interest rates on the vertical axis and real balances on the horizontal axis. So an intersection of the demand and supply of real money is going to give you your equilibrium interest rates. So the Keynesian cross diagram can help us to derive the IS curve and the money market diagram can help us to derive the LM curve. So what we're going to do is going to combine forces of these two curves to get the IS LM curve. To derive your IS curve, you're actually going to need a level of interest rates. Now, this level of interest rates is exogenous to the Keynesian cross diagram because it's not on the vertical nor the horizontal axis. So this is known as an exogenous variable. Okay, And we're going to need this interest rate level to find your equilibrium level of output. And to derive the LM curve, you're going to need the income level, which is exogenous to the money market diagram, so that you can find your equilibrium level of interest rates. So that is how the IS curve meets the Allen curve and vice versa. So the IS curve can actually provide the equilibrium level of output, pass it over to the LM side so that they can find the equilibrium level interest rates which they will then pass over to the IS side to again find the equilibrium level of output. So this is how the two curves interact with one another. I'm pretty sure that some of you have already seen your ISLM model in your study guide or in your lecture notes, but you have to be careful of a too simple ISLM analysis. Okay, We know things that are simple are good, but you can't be too simple, right? So typically, what most people would analyze is this. Okay, So you've got an ISLM model over here. So let's say there is a um, expansionary fiscal policy, like an increase of the government spending or a reduction in the tax level. So the IS curve shifts to the right, and the new income level is Y1, new interest rates is at I1, and you're at point B. So you just say that, okay, after the uh, fiscal expansion, the economy moves from point A to point B. End of story. Well, that is not enough. Um, another, another example of this would be, okay, so you've got your initial equilibrium over here. All right, so let's say there is a monetary expansion. Okay, so the money supply increases. This causes the LM curve to shift down. Okay, so there is a higher level of income and lower interest rates. So the economy moves from point A to point B. All right, and that's the end of your story. That's the end of your analysis. Well, this is too simple. Okay, um, this does not show much understanding of the topic. It doesn't show that you understand the mechanics of how the macroeconomy works, uh, because there is no intuition. And by intuition here, I'm talking about the reasoning. What is the economic reasoning behind the movement from A to B? So what we're going to go through now is the proper ISLM dynamics. Okay, so in order to make sure you have got proper um, analysis of the dynamics, you have to consider two simultaneous dynamics at the same time. And um, the dynamics that are happening would be in the goods market as well as your money market. So you need to consider these two markets when you're talking about you know, how the economy moves from point A to point B. So let me show you the detailed mechanics of how the ISLM model works. And I'm also going to keep it very simple at the same time. So this is your ISLM space. To derive your IS curve, you're going to need the Keynesian cross diagram. So I'm going to draw another graph on top of the ISLM space to cater for the Keynesian cross diagram. And to derive my LM curve, I'm going to need my money market diagram. So I'm going to draw another graph on the left side of the ISLM model to make space for my money market diagram. Okay, here's a quick disclaimer before I continue. I'm sure some of you might be wondering, Oh my god, you have to draw this in the exams? Well, you don't really have to, okay? I'm drawing these two extra diagrams, the Keynesian cross and the money market diagram to illustrate to you exactly how the ILSLM model works, okay? So if you do not wish to draw this in exams, no problem. Just make sure that you are able to articulate in words how the ILSLM model works. 
Thanks for watching a sample of the Quickonomics online learning experience. We hope you've enjoyed it. We believe that true happiness lies in realizing ambitions and dreams. That's why we make our products specific to your needs. Simple to understand and captivating, so that you can learn effectively while saving time, realizing those ambitions and dreams. The Quickonomics online learning experience is a range of supplementary lectures, tutorials, and exam solutions in the form of videos, which you can conveniently view anytime, anywhere. Watching our videos before and after your regular lessons at school, we aim to give you joy in learning and build academic confidence at the comfort of your own relaxed learning environment. So how can you begin? We welcome you to purchase Quickie Dollars to redeem the videos for full access to the Quickonomics online learning experience. Thank you for starting with Quickonomics.